the constitutional law attorney, Katie Jacasky, who joins us right now. Katie, thanks for taking the time. Emotions are very tough uh, about it like this, and I certainly understand where she and other angel moms are, uh, and dads uh, have the feelings they do. But the read you get from those who oppose the president making this move, including 12 Republicans in the Senate, is that it's a slippery slope. Another president might use a less convincing emergency, let's say, to declare one, and back and forth we go. Uh, where is this going? Well, that's exactly the, the truth here. A lot of the president's opponents have come forward and said that President Trump's emergency is no emergency at all. But the truth is that there's no definition of what is an emergency under that statute. And that's really where the battle comes in with the courts here. So the courts can settle this once and for all, or not one court and not certainly once and for all. This uh, latest uh, three-judge panel that will likely review it has a little bit of everybody, a former Obama appointee, a Trump appointee, I think a Clinton appointee, I mean, so you can't necessarily base the outcome on that, but they too are going to look at what is an emergency and whether a president on the right or the left could go too far. What do you think? Right, exactly. And I think for the conservative side of things, the problem that the president runs into is that you have a lot of constitutional conservatives who want to limit any branch of government from going too far with their authority. And the other thing is, like you mentioned, the precedent that this sets for future administrations, if President Trump is allowed to move forward with this, what does that mean for any future president? What can they declare as an emergency? But I think that goes a little too far, because I think in this case, the basis for the president's emergency can actually be supported as an emergency under kind of a standard definition of that. And I think that the, the fears that it can be interpreted in, in any number of ways might be a little bit overblown, in my opinion. Well, I was speaking to some, obviously, who support this, Katie, over the weekend, and were saying, if it's a matter of life and death and lives are on the line and there's a potential of that being a problem or it could lead to widespread insurrection or just violence at the border, um, the potential alone, to say nothing of the facts of the case and some of the incidents we've already seen, uh, warrant the declaration of emergency. But once again, to your fine legal point, we don't have such a definition, so it's very loose. It is very loose, and I think the point of the law when Congress passed that legislation was to give the president this sort of unilateral authority to make a determination, a final determination for the most part, about what is in the best interest of the country. And if something is is potentially risking lives or risking the safety right. of citizens, then the president needs to have an ability to, to take action against that. And there is some checks and balances in place, of course, but those are very, very limited. And of course, the president issued a veto already. It would take a supermajority to overturn that. So Congress gave the president this power. And the point of it was that it was very unlimited in these sorts of cases. So I think that the question will really come down to is this an emergency? Is the law overly broad? Does the legislation need to be fixed to actually give some more guidance to future administrations? But as of right now, I think the president is well within his legal right to, to test this. Testing he is. Uh, Katie, thank you very, very much. We're good having you. Thank you.